I'm Sebastian St. James. Can you protect yourself if the market crashes? Well, the answer is yes, and that's what we'll be testing today. Here is the S&P 500 over 3.1 weeks, and look at that, a massive crash. It dropped 26.7% in just 3.1 weeks. In a previous video, I demonstrated a method of getting out of the market during a crash and going to cash. And yes, that rhymes. In orange, you can see the market is crashing, crashing, crashing. But in blue, you notice we jumped out of the market, went straight to cash. That's why that line is perfectly flat. And then when we hit the bottom, we got back in. Wow, that is impressive. And this is the promise of moving averages. When the market starts to crash, you sell. And then at the bottom, when the market starts to come back up, you buy back in. We use this method on the S&P 500 over the complete data set that I had, which is 94.5 years. In orange is the S&P 500, and there in blue is our method, and you can see it beat the market over and over again. That is incredible. Where do I sign? Well, not so fast. In order for a system to be useful, the following must be true. Firstly, how long is the average retirement in Australia? Oh, it's 30 years. For a market beating system to be useful, it must have a high chance of beating the market over 30 years. And this makes sense. If your retirement lasts for 30 years and the system that you've chosen to go for only has a 20% chance of winning over 30 years, <laughs> it's got an 80% chance of losing. And you don't want that. Secondly, it must work in different markets, such as the ASX 200 and the S&P 500. It kind of works or it doesn't. If it just works in one specific market, that seems as if it's custom fit. And that's no use to us. And thirdly, it must work during different time periods and not specifically require only a bull or bear markets to be successful. On the back of a napkin, I can design five different systems that can beat the market if it's in a bull market or a bear market and you know about it. But if the market thrashes about, oh, suddenly it becomes a whole lot more complicated. There's something special about our previous test. Take a look. Oh, I see. There's a massive crash right there. Near the beginning of that data set was the Great Depression. That's 1929, when America went to hell in a handbasket. And of course, our system detected that, and then suddenly it beat the market. Well, the market was crashing. That's exactly what the system was designed to do. So well done. It is exciting that that system beat the market. But in this video, I'm attempting to make it fail. Why are you making the system fail? Because we ultimately want to stress test. We want a system to be true and not just work in one particular scenario. So this is what I have in mind. Firstly, what we'll be testing is it can't benefit from the 1929 stock market crash. That was never my intention in the first video. It just happened to be the data I had on hand. But in this video, we'll deliberately make sure there'll be no 1929 crash for you. And our data actually starts on January 29, 1988. Well, that's about 50 years after the Great Depression, yes. We tested the S&P 500. We're going to kind of test that, but I'm going to make some significant changes to mix up the index a little bit. We're going from the S&P 500 in the previous test in US dollars now to the S&P 500 total return, but in Australian dollars. If the moving average that we used in video one was somehow keyed to the S&P 500, there's no reason why it would have been, but let's say it was, then by simply changing the currency, that key will be off, right? The market will, instead of going flat for two weeks, will suddenly go up because the dollar has shifted, and that should be enough to throw off this system. The index that we've ended up with is no coincidence. If in Australia you were to invest in the S&P 500, this is what you'd be investing in. Convert it to Australian dollars because you're putting Australian dollars in in the first place and you're getting your dividends. So total return. In other words, what we'll be testing today, the index I've chosen is 100% realistic if you were to invest today. But wait, there's more. What is it? What have you done now? When you convert to cash, because that's the system you hop out if the market crashes, instead of just putting that cash under your bed, which is exactly what we did in the first video, you're going to put it in a high interest savings account and earn real interest. Ooh. This is a high interest savings account interest rates over the last 41 years. These rates are from Australia. So if you put your money in a high interest savings account at home, this is what you would have got. Cool. Are we going to take some sort of average? No. Our cash will be invested in a high interest savings account at the historically accurate rate. 
If we're looking at the shares in 1980 and we happen to get out to cash, we'll be getting 1980's cash rate to the day. That's what I've calculated. We're about to begin our brand new simulation on our new index, but before I do that, I need to do some basic sanity checks. To make sure our code is working perfectly well, let's see if we can quickly replicate the results that we did from video one. This is the S&P 500 over 95.4 years, yes. I've collected a couple more weeks of data because time has moved on. So it's not exactly the same data that we used in the original video. Step number one, as usual, calculate the 200 day moving average. Now, it could be the 50 day, it could be the 100 day, it doesn't really matter. But in video one, it happened to be 200. The question is, is that 200 calendar days or 200 trading days? What we want is the results of 200 actual trading days. Weekends and public holidays, we just ignore those. And here it is. This is the 200 day simple moving average superimposed on the S&P 500. To prove that this simulation still works as per video one, we'll quickly rerun it and see if we get the same results. This is a brand new run, which I've just done today. And you can see we beat the market again. Things are working as expected. Actually, we beat the market more than we did in the previous video. Why is that, Sebastian? Because we're actually calculating bank interest in this particular result. But you can see it beat the market. Now we verify the system does work. Let's change only one factor. Ooh, what's that going to be? Well, it's the index. The old index that we just tested was the S&P 500. We're now going to test the S&P 500 total return converted to Australian dollars. Now, when I change the index, something else happens. What's that? Well, I've got less of that data. So we were testing 94.6 years. Now we're testing 34.6. So everything is lined up. Let's press the big fat go button. And this is the graph we'll be testing. This is the S&P 500 total return in Australian dollars over the last 35.4 years. Step number one, what's that? Generate the 200 day simple moving average. And there it is. Is that in red? Yes, it is. Does it look like it smoothed out the blue line? Yes, it does. And does it more or less sit right on the blue line? Yes, it does. Proving our data is good. And we're off and running. Oh, what do I see here? In orange or yellow down the bottom, we see the 200 day simple moving average. And mostly that's just for reference. So we're not really comparing that. What are we comparing? Well, we're comparing the red and the blue line. And who are the red and the blue? The blue line is what you would have got if you put your money in the stock market and left it there and did absolutely nothing. The red line is the system we're testing today. It jumps in and out of the market depending on what the market's doing. Let's zoom in at the beginning. The blue line dropped below the simple moving average, the yellow line. So what happened? Well, our system jumped out to cash. The red line suddenly starts to go straight. In fact, it doesn't go straight. You can notice it's on a slight upward angle and that's because it's earning interest in the bank. Wow, that's pretty good. In January 1989, you notice our system beat the market. Oh, you beat it for a month or two. How exciting. Over the two years, oh, something's happening. The share price is plummeting. The blue line is dropping like a stone. What does our system do? It detects that and jumps out and goes straight to cash, which is why we have that red line, which is straight. And by the end of two years, our system has actually beaten the stock market. Congratulations, system. Proving over that time period, it's definitely possible. Over to three years. Well, we can certainly see where it protected us. But you notice that the stock market in blue actually came up and surpassed us. No, we're actually behind the stock market. Blue is ahead of us and red is trailing. Over the five years, who wins? Oh, it is the stock market. And we in red, oh, we're definitely behind. And it's a lovely bull market, oh. Over 15 years, aha, red has gone to cash. That's why it's more or less straight. It protected us from the majority of the crash. And after 15 years, we are in the lead by a whisker. Over 20 years, oh, blue has won. Oh, red, what have you done? You've had this little dip. Well, that's a massive dip. There's no little about that. And so the stock market has beaten us. Over 25 years, well, we're struggling to come back up, but we're running behind the stock market. No, this is not looking good for us. Over 30 years, oh no, we're in a long-term bull market. Our system is also 100% invested in shares, but we're down in value and therefore we're not really catching up. And over 34.6 years, which is our entire data set, red has well and truly underperformed the stock market, which is in blue. Oh dear. Proving that the 200 day moving average crossover system, the point of this video actually failed. 
But how does that make sense? Because in the first video, using exactly the same system, albeit on a slightly different index, it actually won and beat the market many, many times over. Well, what you've discovered is that the system is useful, but it's not always reliable. At the moment, what, 50-50? So why? Why did we fail? Well, we did change our index. I don't think that was that critical, but what was is a time period. The new index started from 1988 onwards, and so therefore we missed those early crashes. Sure, we didn't have the incomplete 94.5 years of data, but I've got a bone to pick here because we did in fact have enough. Well, what's enough? Well, remember, the average retiree retires over 30 years. And the data that we tested in our simulation was 34.6 years. Oh, so that's more than a typical retirement period. Well, yes, it is. Meaning that this system wasn't reliable. If something underperforms for a year or two or maybe 10 years, well, sometimes that happens. Gross stocks versus value stocks. It can underperform for a decade. These things happen. But if a system can underperform for your entire retirement, why would I be using it? So how much did it fail by? Well, the S&P 500 total return in Australian dollars, if I stuck my money in the stock market and left it there, returned a CAGR of 11.1%. With the 200-day moving crossover system, it returns 6.1%. Oh dear. So the results are one pass, and a massive pass it was, and one fail. That was the 200-day moving average. But there's also the 50-day, and the 100-day, and the 300-day. Really, you could test any system that you want. So that is, in fact, what we'll do. I would like to rule in or rule out, once and for all, moving averages. So that if you read about moving averages in the literature, and I can prove to you that they either work or they don't work, which is the purpose of the next video I'm going to produce on this topic, you will know once and for all whether to even bother with moving averages, because if they can't work here, they're certainly not going to work in real life. Do you know I have calculated how long you'd have to invest in the ASX 200 and never lose a cent? Really? What is that time period? Click here to find out, or if you've seen that, click here.